When you consider the use of violence, you are bound to hear the adage, the pen is mightier than the sword. Others may do as you please to protect themselves, but their thoughts can be turned against you if left unchecked. Show them why you're right, and they won't feel coerced. What hopefully follows is a civilized society in which violence is only used to prevent the spread of violence. Now, what does this have to do with Jandek? Well, Blue Corpse is held to the highest standard in his catalog, so it's in the same tier as Ready for the House. For a Jandek album that garners this much attention, I must consider a variety of perspectives so that I don't overlook anything. If my pen is mighty in this endeavor, it stands to reason that it's also heavy, and it would be much less work to force my words out without thinking them through. I also know that this record is among many people's first experiences with Jandek, so in this video, I need to be careful not to drive away newcomers before the magic happens. On one hand, Blue Corpse was the first of a string of more conventional albums that defined the late 80s and early 90s. However, there would not be another all-acoustic one in that style, and it would be five years before the amplifier was put away again. Think of this as the peak of the evolution that began on Follow Your Footsteps, and whose remains can be heard on some later records. Naturally, this makes Blue Corpse Eddie's main contribution to the catalog, and what a contribution it is. Even compared to other Jandek albums, this one is distinctly sad. His older songs created a more depressing atmosphere, in which the world is almost static, but Blue Corpse seems like a response to something. The most popular theory is that Nancy left somehow, whether geographically or even romantically. That's easy for us to say because we know she hasn't made an appearance almost 90 albums later. However, there was no way to know this 30 years ago, since most of these lyrics are not about missing somebody. I suppose Blue Corpse wouldn't be as famous without the Nancy theory, but some may forget just how much variety exists in these lyrics. Also, the record may lack the mix of electric and acoustic songs that defined Follow Your Footsteps, but that still leaves us with an interesting selection. While Blue Corpse features the longest classic Jandek song with lyrics, you also have one of the best without lyrics. Jandek's first, and to this day one of his only cover songs, comes later in the record, while his first percussion-based song comes at the very end. We'll get to it later, but there is also a specific chord progression that serves as the main theme of the album, which is actually something you'd expect from a prog rock band. Average listeners can easily lose interest in a Jandek record after track two or three, but Blue Corpse always has something interesting going on. Eddie's singing role on one-third of the album is an upgrade from Follow Your Footsteps. I have been told that he gave Jandek the guitar for that section, but that may just be a half-truth. This brings us to the iconic opening track, I Passed By The Building, for which the theory probably applies. Right away, many will recognize the single chord as the open strings of a standard tuned guitar, which clearly has Jandek written all over it. However, Eddie's vocals are where the song really shines, especially in the first line, which has to be one of the bluesiest things I've ever heard. I passed by the building you were working in. As for the lyrics, this song is probably what comes to mind when fans think of Blue Corpse as a breakup album. When he's near his ex's workplace and home, the narrator experiences brutal heartache as he sheds tears and remembers how she smelled. A similar thing happened to me about five years ago. My ex and I were broken up for a little while, but I briefly stopped by her workplace in hopes of seeing her. I don't know if this song made me do it, but it had to be playing in my mind at some point. Even if the song doesn't tell much of a story, at least it discusses a memorable moment in many of our own stories. In case you couldn't tell, this is the kind of album where every song deserves a mention. On CF, the team takes things up a notch by using a G chord, although the playing is still pretty monotonous. However, Eddie's low voice once again keeps the song alive as he sings about a nomadic life on rivers and mountains. Jandek even chimes in a couple times. The lyrics are fairly straightforward, but the biggest mystery is obviously the title. Perhaps CF stands for Cystic Fibrosis? Corn Flakes? Cape Fear? The list goes on. Anyway, track three is called Variant. A variant on what, I don't know, but I've always enjoyed this one. 
The guitarist goes back and forth between C and C add 9, and trust me, that extra chord is important for the depressing mood of the song. The narrator discusses the constant decision-making he faces, which doesn't get any easier the older he gets. The closing line says it all. He will simply follow someone else's example, which I think says a lot about human nature. For the third time in a row, I find myself really enjoying Eddie's vocal melodies. At this point in the catalog, he has to be the closest thing to a male Nancy. The next two songs are one and the same. Oddly enough, the one called Part 2 comes first. That title means it's basically the second section of the following track, although most of the lyrics are different. After Jandex says it tastes like candy, they go their separate ways. Admittedly, I rarely listen to Part 2, but do you remember that thematic chord progression I mentioned? This seems to be where it originates. Consisting of E minor, D, and C, it must have had some potential for the team to repeat it on two more songs. After part two, Your Other Man makes better use of those chords with its soft introduction. Lyrically, this is another breakup song. This time it shows the final straw of a relationship in which the partners are just wasting time together since the lady prefers another man living upstairs. As the guitarist speeds up, we hear some unrelated lyrics about eating potatoes and letting down the shades. Just another of Jandek's quirky moments. Anyway, this has to be one of the album's best-known tracks, because two remixes were released on an EP called Your Other Men. You can find it on YouTube, but I only recommend the Secret Frequency Crew remix, since it actually sounds like the original. As the shortest song on the record, I hadn't paid much attention to Long Way until recently. It's simply a blues jam in the key of E, and the title is about the distance to the back of a bus. That originally made me think of bus segregation, but apparently this isn't to be taken seriously. For the closing line, Jandek says, Not as long as all that, which, according to my friend, is a dick joke. It has to be, since you can clearly hear laughter in the background. Well, I guess you can just call him Jan Dick from now on. Anyway, I have a bit of a soft spot for the track Down at the Ballpark. It doesn't have much in the way of lyrics, what you see is what you get, but the relaxed mood makes it a nice follow-up to the humor from before. In fact, it's so laid back that Jandek's singing just turns into gibberish at one point. Of course, the song is most notable for telling us Eddie's name, which Jandek blurts out during the brief guitar solo. Another fun fact, for a little while, the opening lyric, Oblique Mystique, was actually my username on Tumblr. Even now, I'm surprised there haven't been any albums by that name. From here, there are some real treats ahead. First, there's the harmonica-based track called Harmonica, which I find fascinating because there aren't many modern songs named after the instruments they feature. Anyway, I wasn't kidding about this being a top-notch instrumental. To be exact, it's not completely instrumental since you can hear some moaning towards the end, but the lack of lyrics is what counts. It's basically the culmination of six years worth of modest harmonica solos, and Jandek puts his entire heart and soul into it. I can just imagine him sitting in his living room by candlelight, belting out this solo with no lover or friends to hear it. But if you thought this was surprising, just wait until you hear one of Jandek's rare cover songs. House of the Rising Sun bears little resemblance to the animals version we know and love. The chords in the verses are C, C major 7, and A minor, while the chorus switches to A, G, F, and E minor. Meanwhile, the animals stuck to the same chord progression throughout, so Jandek gets points for a variety. However, the only problem is that he omitted two verses, so we don't hear what the rising sun is, nor does the narrator get on the train. Fortunately, Jandek picks a good verse to close the song, and the guitarist quiets down. If you barely play cover songs, you might as well get creative when you do, so I give Jandek major props. Now, it's time for the centerpiece. Only Lover is undoubtedly the first Jandek song to give I Knew You Would Leave a run for its money, although it's quite different in many respects. You can tell its length is similar, but when you count the words, 
You'll also notice it's more lyrically dense. The comparisons end there because we're obviously in a different Jandak era where the songs evolve more. Only Lover begins with a slow heartbeat riff similar to Carnival Queen, except this is in E minor and D. The guitarist calms down at the two minute mark and then continues the riff before switching to a strumming style at three minutes. 4.20 is when the team really picks up speed, until they slow it back down at 5.30. The tempo continues to fluctuate until 6.50 when there's a slow guitar fill and Jandek says the title. This is what kicks off the later section of the song. At 7.40, you hear that iconic chord progression once again while Jandek takes a break from singing until 8.20. Roughly the same tempo is kept for the rest of the song, although the last 55 seconds is instrumental. The strumming eventually stops while somebody pounds on the tom-toms, and that's how the journey ends. By any metric, it's absolutely epic, and yet we haven't even discussed the lyrics yet. There really is not much of a narrative, although you may notice a few recurring topics. First of all, it could be considered a sequel to the Spanish In Me songs, for the refrain, Jandek says the line, Gone floating down a river to Madrid, which is incorporated in eight unique ways throughout the track. As the centerpiece of this breakup album, some lyrics are about romance, heartbreak, or even lust. One of my favorites is where Jandek has promised to roam the land of his favorite Jezebel. There are also a couple of drug references, like Arnie the Pill Popper, and something possibly related to heroin use. Listen, mister, can you be my monkey? Feel my pulse, take a stab at my arm. Finally, at both ends of the song, you can hear Jandek wondering about some girl who's been following him. There's no right way to look at it, but to me, it sounds like it's the memory of her that won't leave him alone. Other than that, it's just a bunch of good old-fashioned weirdness, like Jandek's fondness for cantaloupe and his similarity to kangaroos. It may be hard to piece this all together, but the group cleverly wrote Only Lover to make us believe something grand is taking place, and whoever falls under that spell probably has the song in their top ten. I sometimes forget Blue Corpse doesn't end there, but like on 930, I guess the little closing tracks act as a post credit scene. Quinn Boys has some popularity as the latest song to be released on You Walk Alone, but you can probably do without this version. Twice you can hear the guitar being tuned, and when you don't, the playing sounds dull and unfocused. As for the lyrics, the Quins are mentioned in the opening line, but they don't seem to play a big role. This is really about the narrator, who is a wanderer taking a trip from Boston to New York. To be honest, there are a couple of interesting lines, like, Hello misfortune, I got time to kill, along with that baffling closing line. I really don't blame Jandek for starting over on this one. Finally, the one-minute song, entitled One Minute, plays out the record. There was never much to say about this one. It's just some pounding on the drums while Eddie tries to lead a group meditation. It's kind of funny how he says listen to the music when the music is almost over. But surprisingly, this piece of filler has found new life as the intro to Cecil Doyle's radio show, Time for Jandek. I tune into that as much as I can, so I have actually heard One Minute quite a lot in the past few months. It's a testament to the greatness of Blue Corpse when, it, when its most insignificant track gets that much attention. Not only does it exceed as a Jandek album, but it's one of my all-time favorites. I remember senior year when the whole thing was in a single YouTube video, so I downloaded that and chopped it up in GarageBand. That's how it became the first of many Jandek records I burned onto discs. And while some of those have been replaced with official copies, this Blue Corpse disc stands as a relic of my early days in the fandom. Those were also my jealous boyfriend days when I always thought my girl had her other man on her mind. I can joke about it now, but some of these songs take me on a roller coaster ride through my past where I know I'm safe, but the events are just close enough for me to feel the aura. And the best part is that Jandek has plenty more where that came from.